Of course, we have print commands here. That hasn't changed. Your print preview is here. For those of you, if you remember, the page setup command is no longer found in the same place. We're going to talk about that in a, in a tab, but that has been removed from this particular menu. There's a new set of commands called prepare. This will help you look at your document. You'll assess it from 2007 purview. What did I do? Check for compatibility. You can inspect the document in case you've stored personal data by, by default. It will tell you what you've put in there. There are some protection options under there. If you're playing with me, go ahead and click on that. And you'll find some of the newest commands here packaged under the prepare command. Let's go next to the send. If you're, you're looking with me, click on that once. There are distribution options here that work quite well. Of course, with a Microsoft Suite and the great folks at Fando Tech can help you understand those because many of these are server-based and you're looking at some options for sending as a PDF or XPS. And if we look at the publishing option, even more, for those of you looking at a centralized server solution, the Fando Tech folks are perfect for that. They'll help you organize your documents even better. And 2007 gives you exactly the tools you need to do that with one click. It's gotten so much better. And you're going to find that your files and consistency with where those documents go to your blog or to your servers are efficiently managed in one place now. Wonderful set of tools. Now, the Office button is here for you, always turned on. If I draw your attention, underneath the recently found commands uh, or documents there, there's a button called Word Options. I'd invite you to click on that. We're going to look at it a little bit later. But if you're scrolling with me, there is a Word Options button located in the menu. It duplicates the commands that were found formally under the Tools menu. Remember Tools in 2003? You clicked on it, and there were a bazillion options under there. It changes the default settings for some of the most popular pieces of Word. There, this has been centralized for a few different categories for popular and display. As an example, you can choose to turn some of the new features off that we're going to talk about today. You can also change the background color. You can change certain pieces of your save command and your proofing. But if you're looking for those default settings, most of those are hiding in that Office button, the Word Options command. Let's continue working forward. Our redesigned interface. Boy, did that change, right? That was a big shock for many people. It's organized efficiently through the ribbon. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail here. The redesigned ribbon is organized very tactfully. It's task-oriented. You'll notice up at the top of your ribbon, and again, that's the block of commands, right? You'll notice if you look really squint hard, those of you with glasses, really put them on. You notice blocks of commands here. The Home tab is highlighted. Home is up at the top. As an example, insert is now considered a tab. Page layout, references, mailings. Some of these you'll recognize as menu commands from 2003. Others are brand new. They've packaged it up a little bit differently. The intent from Microsoft is to make this all available in one place, one-stop shopping. Left to right, as you continue to edit your Word document, you'll find the tools right on the desktop. Very important so that you don't have to click on a menu or second guess yourself whether it's there or not. They intended to be, again, shortcuts for you. The icons haven't changed. So again, if you're looking at the font group as an example, you'll notice many of the same command buttons for formatting your document. Very important. You want to draw attention to certain pieces in your Word document. Other times you might need to change or strike through. As an example, you're going to see some new little buttons up there for subscript, superscript. Again, these used to be hidden and buried on menus. Now we have some new buttons here for us to look at. Any time, a quick shortcut here, any time in a group, the font group, the paragraph group, if you see this small little visual clue, it's a launcher arrow. It's pointing down to the south a little bit. And it's a launcher arrow. And if you click once on that, that will open up the 2003 menu that this particular group corresponds to. Why is that important? Well, you might have one or two people in your office. I know they're there. They can't stand change. Some of us are like that. Some of us aren't. But if they're really struggling with this new environment, this new ribbon, and they just can't get their head around the new changes, if you click on those launcher arrows, that will give you a tool for helping them write their letter without having to use the new look and feel. And the font group, 
the paragraph group, and we'll, if, again, we'll look at the page layout tab, that page setup group will give you the top five sets of commands they'll need to work around their letters, their memos. Again, this is very important for the administration, administration staff that they feel comfortable having access to their tools very quickly. Remember, they're arranged in tabs and groups. You can activate the primary tabs just by opening up Word. Those are the first seven here um, uh, located on the left-hand side. As soon as you click the Insert tab, and go ahead and do that with me, that's where you can add a number of objects like clip art and pictures and charts and hyperlinks. You can add pieces to your Word document that will enhance it, help you communicate a message. Perhaps you're adding some audio or sound. You can add a number of things. But a big change here for 2007, as soon as you add anything to your document, you trigger what's called contextual tabs. And you might have noticed these by accident. You said, why did these little extra tabs? They kind of come and go. Why? How? Well, let me demystify that. If you click on your picture, you insert a picture of a clip art, you click on it, and they show up. If you click on your text and you start writing, you start typing it, those tabs will disappear. So in context, you can turn those commands on and off by clicking on the object you added. Now, most importantly, for those doing a document, inserting a header and footer, that's a very important piece to our documents, right? It helps keep the document clean. You're able to annotate. That absolutely triggers contextual tabs. So just be careful on that. I've noticed and observed in training classes that some people struggle a little bit with header and footer with the new world. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Remember, contextual tabs, you have to click to get it. Primary tabs are turned on as soon as you open up that document. So again, without further ado, why did they do this to us? Why did they add all these new pieces, including Remember at the top of our window was the quick access toolbar. Let's take a closer look. All of these changes were intended to help you have one click access. The quick access toolbar, remember, is just an extra set of commands. These are turned on by default for the most popular. Now I have to tell you the biggest tip of 2007. The most important button in Word is the undo button. We love that. It's our best friend. Notice it's turned on with the check of a button on the Quick Access Toolbar that's located up at the top. And you might see only a few. You might see a ton. But by default, this is the only location for the Undo button. You won't find it anywhere else. So I have to draw that attention to you, particularly in Word, where we do so much editing and, and redoing. And we tend to share our documents with other, other editorial teams, with legal, with compliance. With IT teams, if I have project teams and engineering teams on the phone, you're probably nodding your head. You know the time it takes to get revisions changed and securing final copies. Well, that undo button allows you to control, again, mistakes and edits as you go, over, go around. I'll also point your attention here, the More Commands button, that gives you a chance to click and open up the menu to in the windows of commands to add and edit even more to the Quick Access Toolbar. I, the second place to find that is also on the Office button, Word Options. Quick tip here, you can right click your mouse on any command you see in the ribbon. And I'll tell you, if you're new to 2007, go ahead and do that now and right click your mouse. You'll see a command right at the top of that little menu that says Add to the Quick Access Toolbar. You don't have to worry about finding it again. And what I like about this is that you can store some of the commands that you just don't use every day with Word. You know, you might be doing a mail merge. You might forget where that wizard is. You might forget where that, that pop-up is for charts. Well, here's a quick way that once you find it, right-click your mouse, add it, and then you'll always find it at the top of your window on this toolbar. That will reside during all of your Word document sessions. You can click to edit for sure. But again, you'll have access to that regardless of where you are in your documentation. Very handy. Again, it's up there by default. 